just to give you an update from sort of the astrophysicist perspective who are sort of, you know, is waiting to see the data from this telescope. Our Slack group just, you know, exploded this afternoon as we were going, oh my God, did you hear what they just said? Did you hear what they just That's scientist for, oh my gosh, wow. And Dr. Becky joins me now. G'day, Becky. Tell me about what was going through your mind when you first saw this picture. I mean, I, can't, I mean, we were giddy. All of us were giddy. It's the only word to describe how we all felt when we saw that image. So, I mean, the James Webb Space Telescope, we've been waiting for it for, I mean, well, most people 20 years. I haven't been in the field that long, but it's been, you know, in the design for 20 years. It finally launched on Christmas Day in 2021, just last year. That was a very nerve wracking Christmas Day. It's been unfolding in space since then, and now it's all being focused. So about a month ago, we essentially had a cross-eyed telescope that couldn't see, you know, like everything focused. And mm. now they finally finished the focusing and released this image. And it just looks incredible. And the reason we were all so giddy is because it's performing at its maximum physical peak that it possibly could be. All this sort of process of unfolding in space, so much could have gone wrong, and yet everything has come together absolutely perfectly. We were so, so nervous for it, because I mean, the, the first rule of space exploration is no moving parts, because yeah. as you can see on the screen here, these moving parts, if something went wrong, that was it, the whole mission was scrapped. So the fact that it's been focused and it's now working at the peak that it could be, like it's able to res what we call resolve, so it's resolution, of 360 degrees around the sky, the smallest thing it can make out is 0 0.0002 degrees. So it's like 0 point and then four zeros, two degrees. It's equivalent of being able to see something that's about 130 meters wide on the moon. So you could, like James Webb, if on the earth would be able to resolve the Sydney Opera House on the moon, Whoa. right? That just gives you an idea of how incredible this thing is. All right, take me to the picture because I, I think what most people mm -hmm. would see first is oh, a bit of a spiky yellow star. What are you <laughs> seeing? Yeah, okay, so first of all, this image is in the infrared, so it's not light we can see with our eyes, it's actually the light that your TV remote uses to communicate with your TV so that you can turn it on from the sofa. And so that's why it's sort of all coloured orange, because it's infrared, I guess. So what you're seeing in the middle is a star that's in our Milky Way galaxy, it's a few thousand light years away. It's a hundred times um, fainter than what you'd be able to see with your naked eye if you were just looking at the sky, you know, tonight, look up, what would you see? You wouldn't be able to see this. But it's so incredibly bright right because of the amount of light that James Webb collects. Now you can see that big sort of six pointed star sort of shape mm -hmm. that it's got. That is actually because the, the James Webb's mirrors are a hexagon shaped. So that's like a, a result of that hexagon shape collecting the light. It creates that shape as, it, as the light passes through um, what we call the aperture, the hole that the light passes through to be collected. Um, and then you can also see in the background galaxies which are like islands of billions of stars in the universe you know millions to billions of light years away and that was incredible to us astrophysicists was because this was just focused on a star mm. and you know just to focus the telescope and that was it and yet in the background it revealed this detail in these galaxies billions of light years away that we've never laid eyes on before